Jack asks, I have a dog that doesn't give up the tug or flirt easily. Any tips on training for a release? When we're playing tug with a dog, one of the problems is, is that the dog can become possessive over the toy, often because the owner is possessive over the toy. So what we want to try and do is teach the dog that the out command is a way to extend the game. I might start by setting the dog up to believe that I'm going to play tug with the dog, enjoy the game, and the dog starts to go, OK, I'm expecting a few seconds of tug play. And then what can happen is, is that I make sure that the energy is really, really high in the the game of tug. What's going to happen after that is, is I'm going to abruptly make the energy go to bit low. I'm going to freeze or immobilise the item and hold it really still and say nothing and do nothing. I'd also make sure there's no tension between the dog and myself, as in the tug's not being pulled tight, and I'd wait for the dog. The dog is expecting activity on the prey item, on the tug toy. So when we don't have any activity on there, this is almost like negative punishment. It's going to cause the dog to shape a new behaviour. I'm going to wait there until the dog might pour at it. I'm not going to respond to that. I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to say you're doing it wrong. I'm just going to hold it still. And what's going to happen next is at some stage of the game, the dog may start to mouth the toy. When it starts to mouth the toy, I might give a little twitch to show that something's happening when you mouth. When that starts to occur, the dog will then open its mouth and I'll instantly reward the dog by marking the dog and let it play tug again. Most people want to have low energy in the game and then when they immobilise the toy, it's really low energy as well. So there's no contrast in the two behaviours. That's one of the main reasons dogs don't want to out the toys. Joe asks, how do I train my three-year-old Staffy to stop jumping up on people when they arrive at the house? Have tried everything. She is usually outside and she makes a beeline for the car and even jumps in on them. When you have a dog and it's, it finds that when visitors turn up, it's very rewarding. The dog is going to then be triggered on the arrival of a visitor. It's going to go into a higher amount of drive and it's going to be really dedicated to be able to go over there and try and get access to the visitor. Right? The important parts are that we need to be able to have certain types of training in place to counter this behaviour. We might be coming on at the start and say, look, well, I think what I'd probably do is I'd crate train the dog so that when people turn up, the dog can't get access to reward so that its reward value for people starts to drop down. In other words, you say to your dog after you know, a couple of weeks of this, hey, we've got a visitor coming over and the dog would go, who cares? I don't get access to them anyway. We might stop rewarding the dog by letting the dog access rewards. That might be the first step. The second step is we would teach impulse control and we could do that by teaching the dog loose leash walking, teaching the dog place training, teaching the dog to stay in the crate while the crate door is open so that the dog is making a choice not to engage with the visitors. And then what can tend to happen is that we can then use, say, loose leash walking to get the dog to meet the visitors in a calm state so that the dog thinks that it's not a humongous reward. And this is going to take down the value of your guest turning up and stop your dog you know, potentially competing with you. Dogs don't usually start by racing and jumping in cars. It's when we've tried to stop them, what's occurred is, is that they're now trying to run this behaviour before you can stop them. They don't think they're doing the wrong thing, they're trying to think you're taking away the fun. We need to be able to say, look, you don't get access to these people anyway, so that the dog's value starts to neutralise a little. When it starts to happen, we can give them access in a calm state so that the dog thinks it's okay to meet people, but he doesn't think it's the coolest thing in the world. Lisa asks, I have an 18-month-old female Great Dane. She loves to jump up on people, especially cuddle me. How can I stop her? She's really bad, especially when I come home. Look, I guess, um, like some of the other questions that have been asked, something that needs to happen with these dogs is that we need some rules and boundaries. This means that if a dog likes something, people often feel bad about trying to get the dog to stop doing it. We gave an example of my dog, he really likes to bite people. So if I just let him do it because he likes it, I probably wouldn't find it cool. And the same thing happens with a great day. I've been in a circumstance where I might come on and say, look, I don't mind if the dog jumps on me, but I'd like to put it on cue. In other words, I like to tell the dog when it's appropriate and, and have the dog understand that unless I say it's appropriate, it's inappropriate. So the dog doesn't try to carry out the behaviour and transition it and generalise it onto everybody else that the dog meets and jump on them. Realistically, some people like their dogs on the bed, some like them on the couch, some like them to jump on them, like some dogs sit in the lap, that's fine too. But I'd always make sure that I can control when this happens and when I don't, otherwise the dog is going to start displaying behaviour at inappropriate times. And then you might have a dog that on Monday jumped on you and you're happy and on Tuesday the dog does exactly the same thing and you're unhappy. And that's not really fair to the dog because you're not giving clear communication what's okay. You come along and put a cue in there called up and the dog starts to jump up on you and then you give the dog a cuddle and a pat and everything's fantastic. And a few minutes later you might display some body language that says, hey look, I'm open to jumping up and the dog jumps up and you go, no, and put the dog back down. It won't take too many of these black and white repetitions before the dog says, I'll only jump when you say up, and when that starts to occur, you can start to divide the behaviour into when I give you permission to do it, and when I don't give you permission, you don't go around displaying that behaviour.
the moment it's used to elicit attention. And most of the dogs that are asking these questions about what happens in the house and running outside and so on, they really don't have enough boundaries on their control behaviour. As soon as something turns up, the behaviour is going to go south and the dog's going to do whatever it wants. At this time it's not listening to you and it's not paying attention and it'll certainly rub off on other parts of your life as well. Jude asks, what's the best method to teach a rock solid recall? And tips to control a super friendly, super social young lab. Recall is an important behaviour to have. It's probably one of the most important ones that, that I want a dog to have. I think that really because the dog can't be managed with a leash and that sort of thing all the time, you really want a dog that has a very strong what we call want-to component of recall. When we train certain behaviours, we would come along and say that the dog has a certain percentage of want-to and a certain percentage of have-to. So if I was trying to rehabilitate a dog that was barking at the dogs, and I said to the dog, sit, the dog would understand that whether it wanted to sit or not, we're going to help it sit. It needs to be follow instructions rather than choose whether it wants to or not. With a recall, that's not as easy to make happen because the dog's obviously far away from you. Recalling is one of those behaviours where I would come along and I would first of all establish a very strong reward system. I would develop rewards in dogs that, that didn't have strong rewards. That might be by developing food games and toy games that the dog says that, you know, he really likes them. There's something that's really popular to the dog. The next part I would teach is market training. Marker training is going to allow me to communicate with the dog when they just make the decision to recall. So unfortunately most training that we see when people are training recalls is that they might learn this at an obedience club and they might have the dog sit down and they'll walk away to 10, 12 metres and they'll say, come, and the dog will get up and start walking towards them. And when it gets to them, the cardinal error I think is a big deal is they ask the dog then to sit. So in terms of the dog that thinks of behaviour in a linear fashion, He's thinking that I was sitting there, I got called, I came, I got nothing for it, I sat down and I got a small piece of food. This isn't going to build you a very strong recall at all. When I have market training, what I can do is I can call the dog and as soon as the dog makes the choice to come, by jumping up, by taking one step towards me, I can mark the dog with a strong release cue like yes and the dog pairs that with a reward, then he comes racing towards me so that I can engage with him in the engagement game that I'd set up beforehand. I would always teach this in a circumstance where my dog is probably always going to come when I call him in the first place, so starting with a puppy. And that means that the puppy is a long line to manage the dog's choices. So if I said to him, calm, and he goes, look, I don't really want to, then I can use a long line to guide him in and then reward him anyway. The dog doesn't really get a choice to explore what happens when I say come and the dog chooses not to. Those sort of things are pretty important. And last but not least is that I think you need to be able to add distraction in a controlled fashion until the dog is reliable. Most people suffer distraction. What I want to do in my training is, is that I want to get the dog to a point where he understands how to run the exercise and when he knows how to run the exercise and get a reward for it, I'm personally going to make it harder for him to run the exercise. So I'm going to be calling him, throwing balls around, putting food on the floor, having people calling him, bringing dogs around and I want him to overcome these issues and still recall to me. I put the distractions in until the dog is, as you call it, bomb proof. That's a pretty important thing.